the Dex Furious was one of my first actual powerful weapons and my first bullet hole style weapon and it made me feel extremely powerful. Now bear in mind this was, I don't know, 4 or 5 years ago, there was an event going on that we now know today as being the yearly celebration for Warframe and me as a mastery rank, mastery rank nothing, didn't have any ducats, didn't have any plat, any credits, any catalyst, nothing. So getting the Dex Furious as a reward for essentially doing nothing, let's be honest, all fully kitted out with a catalyst installed was absolutely huge for me and I used and loved the Dex Furious for many mastery ranks. So of course when the A Furious Prime was finally announced together with Baruch Prime I was super excited in seeing how this one would improve upon the existing recipe. So today it's time to see what the A Furious Prime can bring to the table. As always my name is Lazar and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, affordable, something that a more newer player can get the grips to and treat as a jumping off point. But fear not my friends, we also got the end game setup. Prime mods, galvanized mods, steel path, ribbons, essentially the works. And we're gonna wrap everything up with a Warframe buffs slash synergies section. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone. That's because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Aphurus Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Aphurus Prime is a variant of the, well, Aphurus, and not only that, the Dex Furious as well. And more on that later when we will get to the whole comparing the stats part. For the time being, the mechanics of this one are pretty simple. You point, you shoot, and you try really hard to win. Listen to the noise. Beautiful submachine gun sounding guns. Absolutely fantastic. But of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I do love the design, however, on this one. As per usual, the design team, outstanding job. Pure freaking phenomenal. Fantastic for captura shots. Now, it's automatic, the fire rate is good, the reload is pretty nice as well, rather quick for an AD magazine and the attack at hit scan. As for the recoil, it just jiggles from side to side a little bit. As you can see, most bullets will be landing within the crosshairs. It's not the most accurate secondary weapon and we're gonna do the 15 meter test really quick. But again, that from my point of view is more than plenty. And that's pretty much it for usability and functionality. Let's hop into stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is going to be a 60 out of 60. If your comes around measly for the R30, you can double that mod capacity by going into actions and installing an Auro King Catalyst. The Auro King Catalyst can be obtained from the Daily Sortie. You can also get one from playing Nightwave. You can also get one from certain events in Warframe. But take my word for it, you wouldn't really want to upgrade this weapon that far. This is the kind of weapon that you... Get the mastery points and you're done with it, at least for the time being. The last option for the Oro King Catalyst is going to be to pay 20 plat to have one installed. But again, my recommendation is sit on it for now. Now, my weapon has been Forma a total of five times. You don't need five Forma for the weapon build I'm going to be recommending you. You can get away with something like two or three, depending on the mods that you have. You got a Riven, you got all the Prime mods, Galvanized mods, etc. In the arcane slot there are two good choices, you're either going to be going with secondary deadhead because this one is not going to be able to apply a whole lot of slashes, unfortunately, or a whole lot of heat procs, some heat procs definitely, secondary deadhead is the way to go, or cascadia flare if you're going to be focusing more on a heat build. My recommendation, go simple, go for deadhead, can't aim for shit, go for cascadia flare. Merciless, mm, not really. Well anyway this one has been nerfed because of the ammo thing, so do bear that one in mind. As for the Exilus slot, you gotta unlock this one for pistol ammo mutation, especially in more recent times because of the ammo nerf, so do try to use pistol ammo mutation. It's not a bad idea, the other option would be to be to go for something like steady hands. You don't really need it considering that the base recoil of the weapon is not really all that fantastic anyway, in the good sense of the word, it's not really gonna bother you aiming, or at least it shouldn't. The accuracy is gonna be 28.6, as you saw there in the demo, it works fantastically well. The ammo maximum is 400, which is not bad considering again, recent nerfs ammo pickup is huge at 60 again thumbs up on that one 12.5 fire rate magazine of 80 noise alarming 1.2 second reload for an 80 magazine again pretty good riven disposition of one out of five this is the minimum ridden, riven disposition awarded to the developer for brand new weapons and unfortunately it's one of the reasons why the a Furious prime is nothing more than mastery fodder. You see this general rule of everything coming out with Riven Disposition of 1 works for some things but really doesn't work 
for other weapons as I will demonstrate. Trigger automatic. You got crit chance 16 with a 2.0x critical multi, status chance of 30, which is very good, impact, puncture, and slash, and the highest amount is gonna be puncture. Now you can make this one a slash even if you go out of your way with something like Carnage Stinger. Yes, you put on Carnage Stinger, this one increases slash by 90%. As you can see, it doesn't even get close to the level of puncture. You can even try with the main, but honestly, at this point, you are sacrificing two mod slots for not a whole lot of use. And it goes the same for the impact as as well which means if we can slash we can impact we're gonna try to apply some heat procs we're gonna try to get some vital in there if you want to that's your option i would go for a straight up damage approach with something like corrosive before we go further and we look at a standard build i want you to see a comparison be between the a furious prime and the a furious I don't think I actually own this one because it's one of the most garbage secondary weapons in the game. As you can see, it has an increase in damage for about 30% of the base. The damage layout is essentially the same proportionally wise. You got a lot more status chance. The biggest upgrade is in status chance 18% and 11% in critical chance. Ammo maximum 400, fantastic. Accuracy is not really relevant at this point. Magazine capacity just a tiny bit more and a much quicker reload. And now a quick comparison to the better weapon, currently the Dex Furious. And you will see on the Dex Furious you got worst accuracy, which again is not really all that relevant at this point, but you got much better fire rate, 20 by default. You got a bigger magazine, 100 with the same ammo pickup and ammo maximum ammo again very important right now in warframe but a lengthier reload at two seconds instead of 1.2 as for the damage believe it or not the text furious somehow has lower damage than the base a furious you're looking at 16 and again proportionally we're looking at the same damage uh, layout we're looking at a bit less critical chance 14 percent instead of 16 and just a tiny bit less less than 10 percent less status chance 28 instead of 30 so do bear that one in mind because the biggest difference for these weapons comes in Riven Disposition, as the A Furious and the Dex Furious have Riven Disposition of maxed out 5 out of 5. But for now, let's have a look at a standard build for the A Furious Prime. Damage the Hornet Strike, Multi Shot, Battle Diffusion, Lethal Torrent, Critical Chance, and Critical Damage through the use of Creeping of the Bullseye, and of course, Target Cracker. Target Cracker in Warframe has been sucking for many, many years. So many, many years of sucking. But unfortunately, we still get only 60% critical damage. The Prime version, if you have that one, will offer you a much more beefier 110%. There is one additional option to this one. If you don't like it, you can go with Sharpened Bullet 75%, which is, yes, 75 is bigger than 60, but unfortunately this one is on kill and only while aiming for 9 seconds. Target Cracker is more reliable, Sharpened Bullets is the better option overall, there you go. Now on this particular build we went with 360-60 mods, we got Pistol Pestilence, Jolt and Scorch. This will be forming on the weapon, like stated before, Corrosive and Heat. Pistol Ammo Mutation in the Excellent slot. Pistol Pestilence, easy to obtain from Corrupted Void. In the Void, Scorch by... I don't remember, I think by doing spy missions. As for Jolt Town, fortunately, this one is only, and I do mean only, obtainable from Barakidir, the Void Trader. He brings Jolt every month, two months, three months, half a year, something of the sort. You can also get it from the trade chat, but I would put an eye out on Battle. You can follow yours truly for updates on that one. Subscribe, definitely. And when he brings up any 6060 electricity mods, make sure you have a copy of each. That's it, right? Okay, that's it. Let's go test out on level 120 corrupted heavy goons. Before we go, though, I want to make doubly sure that I don't have corrosive projection or anything that can skew the test results. It is not my interest to make the weapon seem more powerful than it actually is. I just want to give you the clear lowdown on how she handles. Level 120 goons, and we also got the exogog, because you guys keep insisting on exogog. So you got exogog. Going straight for headshots, as per the usual. A lot of bullets into my targets, and that is, without a doubt, a kill, my friends. So yes, it'll kill, as you can see. The experience of using this gun, or the A-Furious, is pretty much a submachine gun experience. A whole lot of bullets into your targets, and you know what? It definitely feels fine. It definitely feels rewarding, but my ammo is going down significantly. Even with the ammo mutation, but I don't have right now on me something like a companion to suck up the ammo and transform it using that excellent slot mod. What can I say? Not bad, definitely not bad. Now we're gonna switch to the Exogog. There's a difference in terms of um, damage mitigation. The Exogog have more EHP, so it'll take more bullets to kill the Exogog. But you can still kill one level 120 Exogog officer in, a, in an AT magazine. This is the performance with standard everyday builds. And you might say, hey, laser, that doesn't look so bad. Well, look again at my ammo. 
I'm on the last magazine. I'm on the last magazine. So you see, sometimes you may run into those ammo issues. If you're not running steel path, you have an easy fix for that. You simply drop pads. Yes, you drop pads. I know some of you get triggered by dropping pads in the simulacrum. Relax, it's fine. They cost almost nothing. But if you're doing steel path, then you might have an issue. You may not want to drop an ammo pad, may want to drop an energy pad or a health pad or whatever else. This is not the kind of weapon to take the steel path. No. You can take it for normal level steel path, but if you're talking about endurance runs, levels in the thousands, stay clear of this weapon. It's simply not ideal for that. God damn, is it ever beautiful though. Now this concludes the whole new player portion of the guide. This is the accessible build. I want you to treat this as a jumping off point. Not some sort of gospel, yes? Just a jumping off point. If you're looking for something a bit maxed out, it looks something like this. You get yourself a ribbon, you get yourself a galvanized mod, we got a galvanized shot. Yes, it does work fine because it's a head scan weapon, galvanized diffusion, still keeping lethal torrent for now. We got two 60-60 mods, it's just gonna be corrosive, so we're gonna go with deadhead. If it would be heat, you go with Cascadia Flare, yes, in the arcane slot. Prime target cracker, prime pistol gambit, and some of you might say, hey bro, hold on a second, if I don't have prime pistol gambit, isn't it better just to use creeping bolts? Uh, yes, you sacrifice 20% of the fire rate, which I'm not a fan of, for just 13% extra crit chance. Not really worth it. One more power-up that you can do, let it not be said that I don't try to max out the weapon as much as I can. You can go with Prime, uh, with a Prime Faction mod, Prime Expel Corrupted in our case, instead of Lethal Torrent. It's not a bad idea. If you despise Faction mods like I do, simply go with Lethal Torrent. You'll be fine. Trust me. We're gonna spawn the targets again, the Exogogstad and the Corrupted Heavy Goons, 120, and then we're gonna... We're gonna go to Steel Path, yes, why not, why not? This being a galvanized setup, you're gonna have to get a couple of kills before the build will be in full swing, but I'm assuming that you can see the difference in performance. Hmm? The difference in performance is pretty significant. I no longer need like half a magazine to absolutely annihilate a corrupted heavy goon, I need like 10 bullets. That's an extra gog stat. The gog is gone. This being a critical weapon, however, going for headshots is fundamentally important. And if you don't understand why that is, it's a bit more complicated in Warframe than in other games, but I got your back covered. Link in the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on critical chance, critical damage, the hidden multipliers that are at play, and how do they apply. Because the order of the formula is really important to the whole thing. Or can be, depending on the situation. Back to headshots on the GOG. And of course, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> brass, brass, please. Shooting standing still targets? Definitely easy, but what about actual gameplay? Well, let's head on over to the Path of Steel. Welcome to the Void, my friends. Now, as you can see, I'm on Steel Path, and I'm gonna go for this Butcher straight away. We got a Corrupted Heavy Goon there, which is a lot more beefy, but what I wanna do is get a few stacks for my Galvanized build before I attempt to show you what the weapon can do. We got a couple, we got two. Panzer Vulpophila, no. Oh, yeah. See, that's what it can do. It's a bullet hose, my friends, and bullet hose have the gift of feeling fantastically well in execution. It feels good to absolutely melt a health bar like so. But unfortunately, in melting that health bar, you're also melting your ammunition reserve. And normally this wouldn't be an issue, but because of the recent changes, which I still believe are a bit anti-fun, in execution at least, um, you gotta watch out for your ammo. So do bear that one in mind. That's another corrupted heavy goon. Make sure you go for your headshot. And you're gonna blow it up with no problem whatsoever. That one even has vital on it. Thanks to the Panzer for the file. This is the kind of performance you can expect in Steel Path. And if you manage to keep a hold of your ammo, which I'm not managing to do, as you can see, it keeps on going down, you're gonna be fine for normal level Steel Path. Up until, let's say, level 150-ish steel path. Now, I have an old stupid reflex from playing Counter-Strike back in the day competitively. I used to reload after every kill, which is stupid. That got me killed so many times. Don't do that. You don't need to do that. A better reflex is to look at your magazine and see how many bullets you have left and then make a conscious decision if you're gonna be reloading or not. Is that an actual... Oh, that was an Eximus. Is that an Eximus? Yes, that was an Eximus. Almost killed me, the bastard. That's kind of pretty much it when it comes to performance in Steel Path. What the hell hit me? Something hit me from behind. How dare you? Must have been a butcher or something. And I do believe this is a corrupted heavy goon 
Eximus, or was an Eximus. Honestly, again, for normal level steel path, you don't really need much more than this for your secondary. On the other hand, certain players, certain players, a lot of players nowadays use their secondary slot for something like priming, so their melee or their primary can deal a whole lot more damage. That's another option you can go for. When it comes to Warframe buffs, you can definitely have more than this. I'm using Revenant. Revenant helps me out with survivability and applying crowd control to my target. I'm using the Panzer Wolfella that applies the vital procs. But if you're interested in more raw power, then you're looking at something like this. Okay, that should be enough for Steel Path gameplay. They're creepy <laughs> and they're cookie. Do you remember? The Adams family. You don't? Oh man, it's your old. Kind of not kind of. I know it, it was wasn't. Before. I know, I know. It wasn't a show that was uh, one popular in Poland to. Uh, it was never a super times. popular show, but it was always there, you know? Alright, let's continue onwards. Hit up Lady Mirage Prime, the absolute amazing weapon buff, her frame in Warframe, and her outstanding assets, as you can see. Cross projection against heavily armored targets, definitely the way to go. Please don't feel forced into this one. If your build calls for something like rejuvenation, uh, brief respite, combat discipline, growing power, or whatever else, simply use the aura of your choosing. Cross projection does make a difference, but in order for you to actually legitimately feel that difference, you would have to go in the thousands. It used to be a whole lot more powerful than it is now. I think it was 22 or 23%, now it's down to 18. If the aura is that relevant to your build or to your gameplay style, Style, please remember Coaction Drift for the excellent slot. Coaction Drift does the following. You get yourself 15% aura strength, 15% aura effectiveness. Yes, and that might sound kooky. Go over to the wiki or fandom.com. At this item, you will see a nice table detailing exactly what are its effects depending on the aura of your choosing. Arcane Avenger is a no-brainer on this one. 45% critical chance. This is from the third idol on down on C. This is a bonus additive after effect stacking on top of what you already have. Applying to your primary, secondary and to your melee weapon at the exact same time. As for your initial arcane or your main arcane, I always use in this slot something for my Warframe. My armor, my energize or whatever else cookie idea I may have at the time. You can go with more fire rate, but that would cause even more ammo issues, so honestly, I would leave this one locked. If you need even more flat damage, even though considering the setup you shouldn't need to, Arcane Precision is the way to go. I think I forgot to showcase you my Riven, didn't I? Yes, I did. I apologize for that. The Riven has damage, puncture, critical chance, and minus zoom. It is my very own Riven, and it's not a particularly fantastic one per se, but it's something so we're gonna go and pump up the level of the targets to 165 when it comes to companion buffs you have two options you either use the uh, little sentinel that will get you more crit you don't need that in this case i'm gonna be going with the panzer Wolf that will get me some vital procs the vital procs from the vulpi are not super reliable so do bear that one in mind pump up the level to 165 so they can wait and unpause them so they can hit me and I can get my glorious, absolutely glorious buffs. We're gonna use Mirage's Empower. I use it instead of her 4 ability and her 3 ability Eclipse for an absolutely massive, massive 840%. 840% Eclipse does not mean 840% more damage. It's a lot more than that because of how Eclipse functions. And one more time, for the best animation in Warframe, however so lovely, boom, clones, beauty flag. Now... It's open season on essentially everything. With this amount of damage, with the clones, with essentially everything, you're gonna be able to clear house with no problem whatsoever. Essentially, the weapon becomes a broom of sorts and you're sweeping everything that stands before you. And you're gonna keep on killing and you're gonna keep on having a good time, you know, up until the point where you run out of ammo. You run out of ammo and you are done. This is an issue only in Steel Path. Everything else you can simply spam uh, ammo pads on the ground and it's not gonna be a concern. Oh wow, that wasn't dead. And I do believe my friends that's pretty much it for the weapon guide. Before I go I need to point out the following. This weapon is actually pretty weak by all accounts, especially when it comes to high level play. This is the latest prime weapon to be released and by all intents and purposes it is weaker than the A-Furis, uh, not the A-Furis. 
weaker than the Dex Furies. Allow me to demonstrate you. We're gonna go really quickly to the Dex Furies. The Dex Furies is essentially the same gun with slightly different stats as we saw earlier. The problem is, or the issue is, the Riven Disposition. This one has full maxed out Riven Disposition and with the same build you get yourself more damage and more critical chance out of the Dex Furies. The Dex Furies, for all intents and purposes, is more powerful than the A Furies Prime with the exact same build. That's a bit of an issue if you ask me. And even if, let's say, even if the Riven Disposition goes up, yes? Taking into account that the Dex Furies has a Riven Disposition of 5 out of 5, that means it's not a very popular weapon, that means it's not a very powerful weapon. Taking that into account, I'm honestly disappointed to see that there was so little thought to the viability of the A Furious Prime. Even if the Riven Disposition goes up, the best you can expect is 5 out of 5 and it's gonna be a slightly better Dex Furious, which currently is not a very powerful weapon at all. And obviously, neither is or neither can the A Furious Prime be in its current state. There was a trend not too long ago with Prime weapons that had a bit of a gimmick. You remember the Piranha? Yeah, the Piranha Piranha Prime. The Piranha Prime had a little bit of a gimmick and granted that gimmick didn't make it uber mega powerful, it made it a little bit more fun, quirky, gimmicky, it added a little bit of personality. This one has nothing of that and more recent Prime weapons have seen the same design language. I feel they're releasing things for the sake of releasing things and not actually giving enough thought to the usability and viability of these weapons. Never mind the personality of said weapons, because the honest crying shame is the fact that this weapon is absolutely gorgeous. Take a look at how beautiful this gun is and how nice it feels in gameplay. Pity about everything else. So for the time being, I'm calling it what it is, Mastery Fodder. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, my name is Malazar. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, let me know in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you want to suggest any particular type of content. Like, for example, hey, Laser, I would like to see this weapon build or that weapon build, and so on and so forth. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There will be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.